Welcome and welcome back to the channel. Ah, how's everybody doing? Real quick, guys. Uh, what is this? Oh nine. Uh, you can see Jeep, so you can tell us the Jeep. Jeep Compass, guys. Uh, whining noise, roaring noise, growling noise. All kinds of noise while driving, supposedly. So what I'm going to do, guys, y'all know first thing you should do, or one of the things you should do, uh, pretty much the first thing you should do, is duplicate it. That's right, you guessed it, guys, duplicate it. We got to duplicate it. So in order to duplicate a roaring noise while driving, you need to grab this, put it on, and basically go drive it. Now... You know, I have a hard time. I can't uh, film and drive, but we need... Whoa. Whoa! I don't really have far to go to duplicate that. Y'all hear that? Okay, hold on a second. This one is obvious. I don't even have to go 20 miles an hour. Let me see something. Whoa. Oh man, do y'all hear that? Now, think about this type of noise, guys. You can suspect this is a little front wheel drive uh, Jeep Compass, likely with a CVT transmission. Now, because the CVT transmission has been known to give off roaring type noise too, you got to be extremely careful on how you diagnose it. So, you basically need to get the car off the ground and do your typical uh, wheel hub bearing. You know, uh, what is it, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Grab the wheel at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. Uh, push in and out, see if you feel any play. Of course, the 3 and the, no, the 3 and the 9 o'clock, you basically testing for, you know, suspension parts like tie rods or rack and pinion and things like that. But, guys, um, be careful even doing that test because a hub bearing can be noisy but not be loose. So that's 6 o'clock and that 12 o'clock position that you are doing that your test on. Uh, basically trying to yield loose hub bearing results. But what if you're noisy? What if your bearing noisy? Oh, wow. Yeah. Police. Fire truck somewhere. What if your bearing is noisy but not loose? So you got to be extremely careful with that type of test. At any rate, we need to get it up in the air and do our typical suspension check. Okay, guys, so I'm going to go, um, I want to be on alignment rack on this type test. Y'all know I want the body, I want the weight of the car still on the ground, but I want the front suspension off the ground. Only way to pull that off is use something like a, an alignment rack. But wow, y'all hear that? Oh, that's probably the loudest. I, I'm driving again. That is loud, guys. That is borderline danger. The the danger in this type of continued driving in this type of state, the, that bearing can essentially overheat and just just shear from the wheel. Now, because it's bolted on with the axle, the wheel might not fall off, but you can ex you can do some major damage, guys. So, do not ride like this. Do not continue to ride if you hear this noise. Uh, Get it in, get it checked out. I assume that's what the customer did. So, guys, we're going to get up in the air, and we're going to go from there. So, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. When I get back, we're going to be inspecting this front suspension. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, now on the underbody, what I've done so far is did my typical wheel uh, inspection. You know, the six o'clock, nine o'clock, or well, three o'clock and nine o'clock, and the six o'clock, twelve o'clock uh, drill. And I didn't get any kind of uh, looseness or uh, noise. 
by spinning the wheel over, okay? Look, now, some front suspension parts have been replaced, and this thing is all rusted out, so you gotta be extremely careful dealing with rusted out suspension parts, okay? Even in the rear, do not forget the rear. They have bearings on them too, you know? I turned this, I didn't hear any. They passed the six o'clock, three o'clock test also, but all that rust uh, bothers me, that scares me. I hate working on cars that's heavily rusted like that. So what I'm gonna do now guys let the wheel let the car down and uh try to isolate it some more without doing a lot of work. But typically normally you should take the axle out and uh turn the wheel and see if you hear the hood bearing that way because this was extremely You loud. gotta be careful with these kind of problems guys because there was obvious a roaring noise while we were driving. You heard that right? Now what you gotta determine if it's a uh, rolling roaring noise, okay, which means does it do it with the car under the roller noise load? Okay, in other words, on the ground driving. Okay, in other words, we're trying to find out if the hub bearings are what at fault. Now, I can't reproduce that noise by simply rolling the wheel. So, what does that tell you guys? Something could be going on in the transaxle, okay? All front wheel drive cars will pretty much have a transaxle built on to them okay this can very well be causing your problem now to further isolate that what I su highly suspect you do or why I highly suggest you do this is a lot of work too guys you got to remove the axles okay because what you want to do is separate the transmission from the wheels that way you can be able to tell if your problem is the hood bearing or actually coming from the transmission so but I got a better way okay I cannot feel any hood bearing noise Normally when I, if it was a hood man, when I turn, it go, but that's not happening, okay? So, guys, what we need to do now is, uh, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let the car down and uh, put it in gear and let the wheels roll, okay? If I hear a noise in gear with the wheels rolling, that tells me it's not hood bearing because I'm not under a load, okay? The wheels are not even on the ground. Now, that's only like a 70% chance. You still could be wheel bearings, but uh, I highly suspect you have noise coming from the transmission. If I get in the car, put it in gear, and let it roll, and I'm hearing that roaring noise we heard on the drive, it's likely coming from the transaction. So, without talking, guys, let's All actually right, guys, do it. Let's I am get it. in the car. All right, let me crank this up. What we're going to do is put it in gear and see if we hear the noises. All right, here we go. Now, because I'm off the ground, wow, guys, that is the noise I heard on the test drive. Wow. Now, this car has traction control, so you're going to see that light. Wow, guys, I'm not even on the road, so I'm not even on the load, guys. Wow, you have to be extremely careful when diagnosing stuff like this. In other words, don't be a reckless mechanic and just yell out hub bearing just because it sounds like a hub bearing. These CVT transmission can give off some of the weirdest noise. I've seen CVT transmission along with uh, PTUs uh, trick mechanics time after time after time. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. If you're a do-it-yourself or you're out there working in the field uh, be very mindful of things like this okay now I have the car off the ground let's, let's think about this for a second I have the car off of the ground in the air I am in gear I am the front wheels are rolling all you hear is Rawr. you're following me the wheels are not even on the ground so uh, like I say that's still a small slim chance that the hub bearing can do that because the axle is actually turning now if you had the axles out and the wheels wasn't even turning and you were hearing that then that's a given you know it's coming from the transaxle so from what i'm hearing from what i'm experiencing right now uh this is a transaxle noise and because the transaxle is included in the transmission which is a cbt uh that makes it a transmission problem all right so they likely gonna need a transmission and because of the age and the mileage of the car, I'm going to recommend uh, all the hood bearings, front and rear. I don't want to hear any road. There's no, it's not a four-wheel drive, so there's no PTU, but I'm going to write up an estimate on 
two front hub bearings. Now, y'all know these hub bearings are pressed in, okay? There's a special tool you use on the Jeep Compass if you want to protect that shield, okay? <laughs> you can't just recklessly. I've seen guys just, just bend it, breaking it, and everything. If you don't have that special tool, it's going to be hard to do. All right, so I'm going to write up an estimate on a complete trans assembly because the noise is coming from the transaxle and uh, front hub bearings, both front hub bearings and both rear hub bearings. Okay, that should eliminate all her roaring noise. And, you know, even, uh, that's that's rolling everything. That's everything that's rolling when you're in gear. So you pretty much will eliminate all that. Now, because that CBT transmission is expensive, I don't know what they're going to purchase. I don't know if they got a service contract or not. They may just, some service contract just may pay for the front hub bearing repair. If that's the case, I'll do that. Whatever they approve is what I'm obligated to do. So I will film the hub bearings likely okay because removing the transmission i have to have set up have it all the cameras all set up but i can film hub bearings so i'll let y'all know guys i keep y'all up to date in other words uh so for now just stay tuned let me go right up this estimate we'll see what happened guys stay tuned all right guys go figure um got approval to do the front hub bearings uh transmission is not here so we got to order this so while this car is on the lift i'm gonna go ahead and knock out the hub bearings guys so uh, I'll try to film some of this. Sure, why not? Uh, the simple stuff I would not film, like taking the wheel off. I'll tell you what I do. I film the actual pressing in and out of the hubs, okay? So y'all pretty much know the drill on removing the wheel and the hub for knuckle assembly. All right, so we'll do it like that. All right, let's get it, man.